Hello YouTube! What up guys? Alright, so we want to bring finally another real talk to you, one that's been sort of long time in coming. Uh, we want to talk to you about the Japanese education system and why it sort of sucks right now. How stupid it kind of is. So, a lot of you make comments saying that you want to study abroad in Japan, that you wish you had grown up in Japan, that you wish you'd gone through the school system, and it's cool. Like, I get you. I took an interest in the Japanese school system a long time ago after reading, like, Mako Covington's notes, and I thought it was really interesting. And, you know, now that I've been here and taught in it for about two and a half years, um, I honestly kind of feel sorry for the students in it. Those of you feel like you absolutely must go study abroad in Japan, um, I'd honestly recommend that you pick another country and study abroad there for the international experience. But if you must, must go to Japan, we have the five things that you will need to accept and come to terms with, preferably before you get but here. But before you get here, because if you come here with the starry eyes <coughs> and the rose-colored glasses, and then you get here and you realize that the rose-colored glasses don't really focus on the things that are necessary, and the starry eyes aren't really the right shape, uh, then you you will be disappointed, and we're gonna See, try to. His fix glasses that. were rose colored when he came here. They're now dulled, and they're now sad blue. So our first point is that there's a lot of pointless rules. Like schools everywhere have a lot have of pointless rules, rules of course. but Japan just Japan really... kicks it up to eleven. We're gonna start with with this flyer that's from one of my elementary schools. Um, this flyer is titled, uh, you know, something along the lines of um, about the things for staying warm in winter, like uh, cold things for winter. Um, this is one of the most passive-aggressive documents in Japanese. This is, this is a translation of part of it, and I'm not exaggerating, this is exactly how it reads. Um, on the subject of those like hot pocket things that you expose to air and heat up, on the subject of Kaido, um, these are things that you cannot bring to school. Why? It, it actually says that. Everyone has decided in the list entitled the things which are not necessary to bring to school, that this is the case. Literally, it says it yeah, that like, passage. It actually it. says, like, minna no kimari ni, which literally means, like, everyone's decision is. So, like, it's sort of like that passive-aggressive, like, we had a PTA meeting about this. Yeah, didn't, didn't and if come you along. weren't there, then, like... Yeah. See, some of these other rules are things like, you cannot have your hands in your pockets when walking to school to it's keep them warm. It's bad manners. Uh, because it is bad manners. You cannot have a neck warmer, and it, all it says is um, neck warmers and mittens are forbidden for the same reason as the hands and pockets. Yeah, you can't wear gloves either, uh, which is... Um, there's a note here about you cannot wear hoods, like this on your hoodie. This is the best thing. I have never <coughs> heard so stupid of a reason for the something. The reason is, if you have your hood on your head, your head may overheat, and you may become disoriented and cause an accident. So, all of these rules then lead us to our second point, which is that these pointless rules that really get way too minute and sort of treat everyone as an idiot, sort of creates this social expectation and this sort of social system that treats everyone as an idiot and stifles creativity and does all this sort of things. Like in middle school, like the other teachers that were around, we used to call middle school the great killer of creativity. And it creates a lot of this stuff that isn't necessary and can actually cause problems, but they don't realize it. For example, when kids enter the staff room where all the teachers sit, um, you know, they have to, there's this whole spiel that they have to go to. It goes like this. Knock on the door. When someone on the inside says something, you can open the door up. You take one step inside, if you're even allowed to go inside, it depends on the school, and you have to say the following things. Excuse me for interrupting. My name is... I'm from class something something. I have something to talk about with such and forth sensei. Please excuse me. And then if that person is there, then they'll be like, okay, come in. But if they're not there, then... The They've just spent the last 30 seconds going through all the spiel for nothing. Right, and then you, they, you just get to walk <coughs> off. And, like, this takes a lot of time, and it's kind of annoying, but that wouldn't be so much of a problem if not for the fact that they always have to do it. Uh, for example, if a small child has gotten hurt very badly, they can't just come in and be like, Oi, there's an emergency, we need the nurse, where's the nurse? You, you know, can't do that. Just the other day, 
like, there was a frantic knock on the door, and I was one of the teachers, and I was like, hey, what's up? And they open the door, and this kid, like, stumbles in, and they're obviously freaking out, and they're like, okay, I have to remember all the stuff that I have to say. Uh, excuse me, I'm this thing, I'm from this class, is the nurse here? And I was like, the nurse isn't here right now, I'm sorry, she's probably over in the nurse's room. She's like, she's not in the nurse's room, and I was like, okay, I'm sorry, I don't really know to tell you what's wrong. And, it th like, the, the... The vice principal was like, you know, go, go on, see if you can find her somewhere else. And this kid was, like, obviously freaking out. And as it turns out, you know, some, some minutes ago, a child had fallen down the stairs and had seriously injured themselves, cracked their heads open, was bleeding and things, and they had to call an ambulance, which they could have called, like, a minute and a half before if this <coughs> if the student didn't have to walk through this stupid bullshit speech. That there's not, like, they don't see that there's a place for an exception in these things. They just, they say that that's how it has to be. It is the rule, and therefore it is, n there, are, there are no exceptions. Like, this goes on to other factors of their life. Like, I tried to do a project with my fifth years about, like, oh, d like, the, the lesson was to design a t-shirt. And, like, the Board of Education has this thing of, like, oh, they're supposed to do it on, like, a piece of paper. But you've, like, you were told to build this up from lesson one of yeah. this unit. That, like, you're going to design a t-shirt. So when I got to the end and saw that it was just supposed to be on a piece of paper, I was like, yeah, no, yeah, fuck, no, that. fuck that noise. Like, we're I'm going to go to Daiso, we're going to get a bunch of t-shirts, and the kids are going to draw on these t-shirts. I then came to realize why... They said to make it on a sheet of paper because I went through this lesson, like, built it up step by step, like, all right, get into groups, and then, like, here's a piece of paper, come up with a group design. You've got, like, 15 minutes, okay? Good. We all finished? Good. We've got this all design. Right. It's got shapes. Here's, here's an actual t-shirt. Everyone look at this. All right. The next 10 minutes, you're going to take that design, you're going to put it on this t-shirt. Majika, Majika, we can't do that. We can't do that. And even the teachers are like, Mary Sensei, that that's gonna ruin that shirt. And I was like, Nah, it's cool. That's like this the point. was, it was a dollar from Daiso for this shirt. Like the point of this lesson. I told you for like three weeks now, you're gonna design T-shirts, but we'll ruin it. We can't possibly. That's not what you do with T-shirts. We've been taught for the last ten years that we can't do that to a T-shirt. What are we gonna do? And it's. It's kind of heartbreaking to see that, especially because, like, in America, that was a thing. You got, right. like, a camp t-shirt and you all sign it oh, and yeah. stuff. And it's, like, that, that sort of thing <coughs> happens quite a bit in other countries. But it's to the point where, like, you know, in kindergarten you have, like, the macaroni sculptures and shit. And you do those all the time. They get to do that, like, once a year here. Ever. And it sets in this idea of functional fixedness. And, like, that object can only be used for that purpose. And I think that's tragic, especially for children, because children are, like, the best... At, at, at breaking functional function. clutches and shit, right? Right! And I know a lot of you are probably going to be saying a comment right now about like... You're already writing it. You're already down there in the comment, or you've already done it and yeah, you, haven't you haven't even, even gotten to this, this part, part of the video. Um, where you're going to say that like, oh, but like, you know, you just said the people who make anime. They clearly have creative jokes about it. They clearly know what's up. How do we get anime and creative stuff like that? And what's about them? Why we have them is because they are the people that don't follow the rules. They're the people that from the beginning have said fuck this, who stay at home and don't hang out with the people that try to perpetuate this. And that's why you hear like all, if you ever like read any of those directors like backstories and stuff and they're all things like, yeah, no, nah, I was just sort of that weird kid in high school and so like I stayed home a lot and drew a lot. That's most of their backstories because they didn't fit into this system. And But then why is then those animes, why do they become popular like Lucky Star? Those ones become popular because those are the things that people watch to, like, escape from the system that they're in right now. It is literally the best escapism. America has The Sims, Japan has anime. Has literally all of their animated media. That's how it goes. All of these pointless rules then create so that when these children become adults, they have now moved on to a full society of control freaks. And that's part three, is that teachers are very nice. Like. I don't have a problem with most of my coworkers. All of them are wonderful people. They are such control freaks. I can't even describe it. For example, we went out shopping to like go get groceries one Saturday night. It was like it was a three day weekend. It was a Saturday, no big deal. It was probably like seven PM. Something or so. like that, yeah. Um my school's PTA, because I live near one of my schools, there's like thirty old people gathered outside the, the grocery store. And they're wearing their pretty little yellow vests, this PTA on the front. And they're discussing, like seriously, like, okay, 
So, we've got to start patrolling the area. Let's make sure kids aren't at the game centers. We can't have that because that's be too awful. far away from home. All right, and if any of them are out right now, we really need to warn them. Yeah, tell that, them. Like, it's that a little late to be out right now. It's 7 o'clock on the Saturday. And if they're with their parents, we need to speak with their parents mm -hmm. that perhaps this is not the best thing to do. We have to make sure that they're late. not in Mr. Donut actually enjoying yeah, that's, donuts. Yeah, that's terrible. Because that would be awful. That's We can't have that sort of And then they, they did this thing where they, like, they broke and then they scattered out to cover the city to make yes. sure that the kids weren't doing anything. This is, like, the entire city, like, the area of the elementary school on a Saturday night on a holiday. Like, they're policed, and that's socially expected. That's the norm. Like, if you don't do that, the parents will yell at you for not telling them how to parent right. Like, it's not just the students that are under this level of control. I had to have a meeting one day with one of the people at my at, at the company, <coughs> and, and the, the Kyoto and the, and the Kocho, the vice principal principal, about what they are, they are and are not allowed to force me to do and pr prohibit me from doing. It was to the point where, like, Mary and I practice circus once in a while. Like, I've got stick, she's got hoop, we do stuff outside. My school is seven stops away on the train line, but they know about it somehow. And they want, they asked the guy if they could tell me to not do that because it's inappropriate. And the guy was just like, no, you're stupid. He's, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, it's, it's, it's his off time. But the school wanted to be able to control the off time because the only reason we escape it is because with our contract with our company, we don't actually work for the Board of Education. We're we work contractors, for this company. Yeah. So we're basically just leased to, this, to them. If we were normal teachers and worked for the Board of Education, they could control that. Oh yeah, they could it's tell you, they like, could we will fire you if you don't stop playing with the stick outside. Moving on to point four then, to achieve this sort of level of control, like to get the level of control that they want, Japan has entirely too much structured learning because they seem to fear, like actually fear and be afraid of what would happen if we had a more free form like project based or anything like that. Like activities are okay in elementary school because they're really small children so they understand that like, you know, we have to, or else they're not going to pay attention. But once you get to high school and you really set into this like super controlled structured learning schedule, if you want to have like a review game or something like that or you want to do a game type activity in the class to review language, they lose their shit. No. You have to be able to justify on no fewer than seven levels why you would do that and its educational value. And then they're going to tell you that you can't do that. Because if the parents were to find out that you were doing Playing games, games in class, oh, why would you... That's not how people learn. That's not... There is no educational value yeah. in it. And then you, you know, hulk out, punch them through the wall, and leave. You wish you could, but then you'd get fired. They had educational reforms... Uh, a while back, a decade or so yeah, ago, sometime to ago. try to scale back on this whole thing. Like, you guys probably heard about the fact that that sort of rumor, like, oh, in Japan they have school six days a week. They used to. Ten years ago or so, they stopped that. So they Because, made you know, kids were throwing themselves off of school buildings and committing suicide because of the amount of stress and the fact that their lives, they could see that their life really had very little meaning outside of school. So... So they made it so they only had five days of school a week. And then a bunch of jukus, cram schools, opened up all over the place, and everyone went there on Saturdays instead. So it's the same thing, you just have a different set of teachers on Saturday. They tried to escape tradition, and then just like, nah, society is already in this set, because as we've established, all of these things just build on each other. So you've got this all worked out, and so you're just stuck in this tradition, which is our point number five, is that... Japan as a whole, but specifically the education system, is entirely too stuck in tradition. Like, tradition is all fine and good, like, I understand the need to respect the tradition of, old, of other cultures, but when your tradition, one, does not make sense, and two, is actively, actively dangerous. holding you back or causing harm, it's time to sit down and reevaluate your traditions. Like, for example, um... Teachers are not allowed to clean the blackboard in class. Um, we can wipe it during class if we're using it, but after class, the students have to do it. Yeah, like as soon as the bell rings, the, the blackboard becomes that sort of Shangri-La that you're not allowed to touch or you sully it. Like, I've been yelled at several times for just wiping down the blackboard so a student didn't have to do it. So while we were doing school cleaning, which we all have to do after lunch, like there's these two little first graders trying to clean a blackboard. And one of them can't reach to the very top, so he starts jumping up and down, trying to reach it. And the other girl cleaning is like, no, loses her stop, shit. stop, like, you can't jump. And I was like, to do that. 
And I was like, okay, well then here, like, give me the eraser, I'll do it real quick. No, you can't, and they both freak out. Like, you can't, you can't do that, you're the teacher. Um, senseis, don't, don't clean blackboards, we can't have you do that. And I was like, all right, what would you suggest? And the little girl grabs a rolly chair you with like a kind. swiveling seat and stands on it. Alone. No Alone. one is holding it, no one's, and she starts, and I was like, you know, it would have taken me two seconds to do that instead and like the the teacher the homeroom teacher's in there is just being like yeah whatever this is this is normal this no happens problem. every day and i'm just like right so the children have to go through a whole speech while another kid's bleeding out at the bottom of the staircase but i can't clean the blackboard to keep this girl from you know Falling potentially getting another head injury this is how your head injuries happen isn't it i understand that there's the old confucian ideal of the teacher student relationship and i understand what part that plays in culture but when you're actively putting children in a dangerous situation, you need to stop it. This also continues on how, just how they treat the subject of technology and new educational methods in Japan. Things that would break tradition because they're new. Right. Or they cover new issues that we didn't have 50 years ago. This goes like again with like how the, to type. Yeah, the video that we made a little bit ago about saying that old people still run Japan, that's why we don't have like 24-hour ATMs. It's the same thing here. If the thing that you are bringing in somehow changes that circle that they've carved into the stone over the past 50, 60 years, then they're going to lose their <coughs> shit, they're going to freak out, and they're going to forbid it. It's for this reason that I had high schoolers who had no idea how to type. They, like, they all saw me typing, and they were like, what the actual fuck? Right. In middle school, you taught that. How, yeah. How do they learn to use computers in middle school? So, like, in middle school, right, you have three years in middle school, and during second year, you have one hour one entire hour for the whole fucking middle school thing where you go in and learn to use a computer. You learn to use the mouse, which is the first part, which is important because if you don't have the mouse, you know. But then they have like a 20 minute like typing class and then they've got just a big poster of a keyboard up on the wall so that you can like point at the buttons that they have to push. And it's so ridiculous. I think that's why Japan can be like a very high tech nation and have all these innovations but no one, like, even now, like, my coworkers who are 20 and 30 don't really know how to use a computer because their education system didn't teach them because why would it? They didn't have that 50 years ago. You don't have computers in the classroom very much. You are lucky if your school has a computer lab that you must go through, you know, the, the fires of Mordor to be able to use it. You are lucky if you are able to use any computers there because you might put viruses on it because you don't know how to use it because it's new. All of the new educational tactics that are coming out, you know, overseas, like we just had, there was a TED conference that was all about education. Like Bill Gates came to speak about like, oh, if teachers could record themselves and we could like all have ratings and stuff. So if you need to teach fractions, you can easily go and find the top rated video of a math teacher teaching fractions and, and learn, learn some of the best ways that. to do it. Or you could watch your own videos and be able to see where you could improve. Or, you know, the concepts of gamification, where you can make education something people are excited to do by using the concepts of games yeah, to help make like it addictive. Yeah, like a sort of reward system like that. Don't even think about suggesting that in Japan because they will, first of all, have no idea what you're talking about. And then once you sit down and explain it to them, they're just like, Yeah, why would we do why that? Would we, why would we, why would we go out of the trouble, go, go through all that trouble to do that when we already have a perfectly good working system? And that's my overall conclusion with this is that Japan does not have a perfectly good working system. Yeah. It might have been fine. 50 years ago, but, but you know, the world changes on occasion. The education system, much like literally everything in the world, must grow with the people. You see all these reports that, you know, Asian countries are beating all the Western countries in science and math, and, you know, that's fine. Those are all very logic-based things that can be taught by a formulaic system. By rote memory. But creativity and the like, y you can't rote teach that. That doesn't happen. And Japan, rather than, you know, accepting that these things are happening, they're they're just completely ignoring it. But thinking that if they just pretend that they don't exist and that they don't teach students about it, then their students won't create computer viruses and they won't go create internet porn. They think that if you just don't learn about it, it you'll never exist, learn about right? it. So you know, we see a lot of reports now that Japan is kind of starting to go downhill compared to the other countries. The economy's going down, birth rate's going down. In just a number of factors. The main cause, as far as I can see, is that they have this entire framework of not changing, of not shaking things up. 
And it starts at kindergarten with this education system from the whole, like, say this speech every time you enter the cla- uh, and the mm-hmm. teacher's room, no matter what. You know, we can only use this item for this thing. And I think it's tragic right. because, you know, I see a lot of these students, they're completely hilarious. They can be funny. And then you see them, because I've taught now at high school and elementary, and it's just an insane change that happens. And it's, it's really actually sad to see. Like, I feel bad for them. That's why I actually feel bad for my students going through the system. It's just not like... The, the bottom line is Japan does not prepare people to be people. It prepares people to be part of Japan. And that's it. And, like, Japan right now is having this huge thing where they want to be independent, especially the Nationalist Party. There's oh, just, yeah. There's this huge push that Japan has to stop relying on America. They've got to be more like Russia, is a thing they actually say. Which made um, me laugh. And become more independent, but you can't. When you do not learn problem-solving techniques, you cannot be independent. And I think that's a large part of Japan's problem. To, to boil everything down into this little ball here, if you're gonna come... And if you absolutely must come, I recommend that you do it during university. You should. And it is only because in university you are already an adult and they can't put as many rules on you that I recommend that. If you absolutely must come during high school, please be prepared to not have everything look like the animes. I mean, if you really want to wear that school uniform and stuff, go get a cosplay. Moral of the story, be happy with the education system where you came from. And if it sucks, Find a country that's not Japan. Find a, to go yeah, find a better place. Alright, bye. Later. And then you, you know, hulk out, punch them through the wall, and leave. You wish you could.